So myself and Gonzo were recording the player ratings earlier from the Wolves game and some people in the live chat were saying, whoa, 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 have you seen what David Moyes has just admitted? Now, earlier on this morning, Danny, of a CEO of Stephen Bartlett, my favourite podcast, has uploaded an episode with David Moyes, which was recorded not that long ago, um, just before Christmas time, it would have been recorded after the World Cup, but before the restart of the Premier League. And within that podcast, David Moyes admits he turned down the chance to sign Alvarez, the Argentinian striker that now plays for Manchester City. We've just had a little listen to that piece, Gonzo. What are you thinking? I'm, I'm amazed he's admitted it. I think he's very brave to admit it. Uh, to put into context, the interviewer asked him where uh, were there any where he got things wrong. And David Moyes said one of the things that there are a number of players who he had the opportunity to sign didn't go on to sign and they went on to become good players. Um, he was a little bit tentative at the start. I think the guy was saying, oh, I don't expect you to name names. Well, he, he did go on and reveal a name. It, again, it's probably fair to say he said that there's, there's loads of guys who have passed up your opportunity to sign and they didn't go on to do anything. He said, but the most recent one was um, was Alvarez. I, I think... I think the, the, the thing is, Gio, he said he just appointed a new scout. And the new scout had come back to him and said, there's a player at River Plate, and I think he'd suit West Ham really well. Um, and Moyes said that he had a look at him and he, and he thought oh, he wouldn't bother. And his reasoning for not bothering, even though the scout had recommended him, that he'd be a good fit for West Ham, because was that we had Mikel Antonio. <laughs> and, um, and I think that's... I think that's the part, and that's really the bit. And what it does, it for two things, Geo. It, it and we are just reacting instantly to it. But it, there were two immediate things that struck me, which is, you know, number one, it, it's obvious this player is is significantly better than Mikel Antonio. So you've got that side of it, which is what? How could you possibly look at this player and not think? We, we need him. We want to get him, and that's an improvement. The second part, it comes back to one of the key reasons why I think we're struggling at the moment, and it's this overriding sense of loyalty from everyone. And loyalty, and it's, it's a shame to talk about loyalty as a bad thing. Sullivan's loyalty has kept David Moyes in the job too long. David Moyes's loyalty towards people, let's say, like Thomas Suchek, is a hindrance to the team. So there's this feeling that that for somehow he can't replace Mikel Antonio because he's got to be loyal to his core group of players. And yet again, it comes back to the fact that we seem to spend this time. And he said only only a year ago, he said, by the way, only a year ago. So if it's recorded, as you say, at Christmas, only a month or, or so ago. So this, this is a year ago. We were in desperate need of a striker a year ago. And you get back to that same thing that David Moyes had, which completely hinders him, which is basically all... Oh, one striker, go through the season with one striker a year ago means we could have signed. Sorry, it's all coming to me now. A year ago means we could have signed this guy, and this guy could have been available for the um for the you know the um the Europa League running. Um this guy could have been the difference between seventh and fifth or fourth. I mean it's it's preposterous. The more you think about it, the worse it gets. Oh yeah, I'm really angry. I'm trying to stay calm because I'm trying to remind myself, oh, there'll be loads of players Moyes has passed up on, some have gone on to do well, but there'll be loads that Moyes is saying yeah. no thank you and it's gone on to do crap which would justify him but it's it's the whole thing around it first of all we hired rob newman officially in october and so this would have been one of rob newman's first recommendations which is alvarez at river plate go get him rob newman would have basically said this is someone man city are looking at that's how i know about him man city are looking at this striker go get him this, when, when Moy speaks about just over a year ago, we're going back to, because of the time of recording the podcast, we're now looking at the middle of December 2021. That's what we're looking at, just before the January transfer window last year. Middle of December 2021 is when we're talking in terms of time frame. We were fourth in the Premier League. We were fourth in the Premier League at this point. So Rob Newman, while last time we're fourth, has said, here's a striker that cost City £40 million in the end. So... It's not even it's it's punt money. That's essentially what it is. This is punt money. It's not like a big load of money. We didn't have Skamaka at the time. We had Antonio and only Antonio as a striker. We were screaming out for somebody to help him to take over from him, whatever. We were screaming out for a striker. We did nothing in that January transfer. And we all know what happened. We went on to finish seven, but more importantly, 
We didn't win the Europa League. And how often have we always thought, if only we invested in January, we might have gone on to win the Europa League. We might have finished in the Champions League places. Well, actually, when you look at someone like Alvarez, well, it's difficult to say he wouldn't have made an impact. We've seen what he's done at Man City, which is limited at the minute because of Haaland. But more importantly, we've seen what he's done for Argentina at the World Cup as well. And this is we've brought in a head of recruitment from Man City and essentially overruled him. He's turned up and said, here's a striker. We go, no, thank you, mate. We don't want him. Uh, we'll, we'll keep our, our money in our back pocket. Thank you very much. I I think it's wild that he's admitted it. I don't know what he mm. gains. It's very honest of him. But it's really, really hurt me the, a lot here, Gonzo, because how often do we get told in January there's no one available? Well, you've just now admitted he was available. You've just now admitted you were aware of him and you chose not to go for him. So whenever we get told, oh, there, well, there's nobody that we want, there's no one available, costs a lot of money, costs 14 million. That's not a lot of money. He was available and he was affordable. And the talent is glaringly obvious. I knew how talented he was before he arrived at Man yep. City. We've we, we all seen the high clips of him yes. going around. Look at this sensation over at River Plate is going to smash it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He was a name that was familiar with football fans without having seen him play. And you don't get many of them, but there was he was that player. And listening to it, oh, honestly, there's there's nothing positive. To, well, there was one small positive to come out of from this for West Ham fans. One small positive, but in the grand scheme of things, there's nothing. Um, it's just beggars' belief. And when you look at how the season finished and you, how often have we thought, what if we invested in January? What if, well, there's your answer now. What if we went and got Alvarez in? It, you'd be looking at a completely different second half of the season. That'd be one less player for us to invest in in the summer. How often have we heard more? Say, oh, we had to buy nine new players. Well, you had the opportunity to sign Alvarez in the summer. So you, uh, January, sorry, you wouldn't have needed to buy Skamaka in the summer, but you had to because you passed up on players like that. I honestly, it's it's really wound me up listening to him speak about that. It shouldn't do. I'm trying to stay calm, but I'm really, really angry. Um, that was the golden bullet for our season, and he chose to overrule his head of recruitment, which we literally just gone and got for Man City, a player Man City were scouting for God's sake, and we decided he's not good enough for West Ham. It's just mental. I I, I suspect um, he was not. He's not big enough. That, that's I'm I'm, th I'm looking at that and I'm thinking that, that just if you look at the profile of what Moyes wants went in for Darwin Nunes he wanted Breuer he's got Skamaka all right you know Antonio's not not six foot but he's 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 six foot wide in that sense um, I I what I do wonder about that um, but in terms of what you were saying about him being known I mentioned him in the City preview at the start of the season. Now, granted, I got it wrong. I said, I said, I suspect he might work out better than Haaland. Okay, hands up, right? Clearly, clearly, Haaland's gone on as a as an into the stratosphere. But it does show that that he was. But to be fair, right? Just to interject, there's still a debate as to whether Haaland suits Man City. You know, he's he's obviously an incredible goal scorer in that. But when you watch City without Haaland, they are a lot more fluent. And you could you could actually make an argument Alves suits their style a bit better. But I appreciate what you're saying. Yeah. So, but you know, it was he was known. He 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 was known. That's that's the point. Um, it's it's crazy. It's it's absolutely crazy that we don't. The thing is, we don't need to hear this now. That that's the other thing. This is it's not good for us as fans here. Certainly can't be good for David Moyes. Obviously, this won't be news to David Sullivan. Well, it might be. Well. Well, if well, it is, you're assuming David Sullivan's aware of all the players Rob Newman's recommended. To yeah, David yeah, and David yeah, Moyes yeah. Just turned down. Yeah, I guess I was. Yeah. Um, well, that that would that would that would be quite damning. I I would I would imagine that would be quite. I mean, it's it's, it's not it's not for me to say. Look, that David Sullivan's got two young sons. They like football. They're going to be aware of football. They're going to be very very aware of of who this this guy is. Um, if they don't know, then I would I would imagine um, you know. Uh, Sullivan's two boys are going to be saying to him, Dad's um, um, got something to tell you. Uh, you know, it's it's it's, it's ridiculous. I just we just don't we don't need it. We don't, honestly, we really don't need this to come out now. It is it is is, is, is an admission. What it is, it's just an admission of failure. 
that's that's what it is. He's, he's admitting his deficiencies at a time when we think he's massively deficient anyway. Do you think this is why we've seen the summer transfer business go that way then? Because we've always wondered, well, who's buying Paquette and Skamaka? It's not David Moyes. Do you think maybe the Alvarez thing is what's taking the power away from David Moyes? In a sense, well, look who you've turned down. You're not getting that money. We're going to give it to Rob Newman. He, he can clearly identify a player, so he can now decide which players to go and buy. Do you think this is why we're after someone like Terrain Murphy, that maybe Rob Newman's the one that said he's a top striker, and we're going, we'll go get him and forget your manager, forget what he says. It doesn't matter. Look at Alvarez. Forget what he says. Go get who you want. I, I, I would hope so, but I have very, very little faith that Rob Newman stays around too much longer once David Moyes goes. I really hope I'm wrong. I really, really hope I'm wrong, but um, I, I'm, I'm not so sure. I, I, I think it's so important that the ownership have faith in in the um, in the recruitment director, but this is why we need a sporting director. The sporting director is really important. It's, it's the sporting director oversees all of this stuff, or whatever, football director, whatever you want to call it. I don't know, so many names now. It's, it's got to be sort of separate from that. So when you get, so he oversees everything and he decides. And then when you get to a point where a manager's struggling so much, Geo, like Moyes is, you don't have this hurried list of candidates. Oh, well, oh, Benitez, he used to be good. And oh, what about, um, what about Bielsa? Oh, he'd be good. What's Neil Warnock doing now? You, you don't get that because you, you've got this, this guy that's overseeing it. So you have, you basically have joined up thinking within the club and, uh, and you, you, you would just, you would just hope that there's someone at such a level that brings that player in. And if what you have is a manager who then refuses to play the players that you've br brought in, then you have to replace that manager. Um, that Most managers in the Premier League, I would imagine most have to use players that they haven't signed. Did you hear Graham Potter yesterday? No. Okay, so they've signed the fella, the Ukrainian fella, right? Medrick. Yes, lots of money, apparently. Um, Chelsea won yesterday, I believe. And then after, in the press conference afterwards, I only heard I only heard the press conference, he was asked about it. Uh, Potter, Graham Potter was asked by the journalist, said, oh, and, um, we, and we understand you just brought uh, Mudrick in. He turned around and he said, yeah, yeah, I, mean, I don't know how it happened. I don't know how he was acquired. But, uh, yeah, we we'll, look forward to seeing him and we'll, we'll look at him in training and see what he can do. Seriously, that's what he said. Um, and it sounded like a like a veiled message. Well, it very much was. I don't know anything about this guy. Um, but Potter will find him find his tenure very, very short indeed, despite the fact that the form hasn't been good. If what he does is he doesn't play his owner's new £80 million pound winger or whatever he costs. I don't know what he costs. I, I just can't believe it, Gonzo. To hear this, it's the last thing I needed here today, to be honest with you. Our manager confessing that he could have signed what will be a world class striker and turned it down. And you said, and he, well, Moyes gave, I say you gave the reasons he didn't buy him because of Antonio. Moyes said he didn't buy him because of Antonio. It's just wild, though, because Alvarez is a hard worker. It's not like he's one of these strikers that stands around and waits for the ball or anything. He works his cojones off. You look at him in the World Cup. He's, he's there, he's running around doing all the hard work, helping Messi play because Alvarez is doing all the running for him and stuff. And actually, I struggle to think of a more perfect striker for David Moyes. That, this is the thing that's like really frustrating. But I just think it's bonkers that we recruit Rob Newman from Man City. And we always had this hope. That despite being, Newman was on gardening leave for months before he came to West Ham. Yes, he was. As yeah. soon as they, they uh, get out there to hide, stay away from us. Because while we wouldn't be going after the same top dollar players when they're going after, you know, like Haaland, that's not West Ham. But what Newman might be aware of is those 17, 18 year olds yes. that sit here keeping an eye on that actually West Ham can go and get. Look, like who's Southampton have just gone and signed for Man City? We'll have him, we'll have him, we'll have yeah. your 18, 19 year olds. That's the dangerous bit. That's what, and that is Alvarez. Rob Newman's coming to West Ham. He might have had a very small list of said, Here's some players sitting here looking at that I personally have scouted. They're really, really good. They're good enough for Man City, or they're not quite good enough for City, but they're really good for West Ham. Here you go. And we've looked at it and went, No, thank you. And I just think it's bonkers that we've hired somebody to recruit players and then refuse to buy the players that he suggests. I think it's just absolutely wild. It's like going and getting a flipping five-star chef and saying, can you whip me up some tomato soup, please, mate? Oh, you sure? You don't want anything better than that? I can do? I'm capable no, I, I, of more. I, I, no, no, I, I, no, I have some I, I, tomato I, I, soup, please. 
Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. But I, I agree. It's like hiring Gordon Ramsay and asking him to work at McDonald's. No, it, it's, 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 just, uh, it's, yeah. it's just absolutely bonkers. The one positive is Rob Newman's capable of identifying top talent. So I guess if anyone looks good off the back of this, it's Rob Newman. And this is assuming it's Rob Newman, but I think the dates yeah. all add up and stuff. And, and given that Alvarez has gone to Man City, Moyes described him as a scout, which is perhaps interesting. Uh, Moyes said, my new scout, which I thought was, oh, he's not really a scout, though, is he? He's the head of recruitment. So it's a bit of a... a well, Moyes, Moyes, likes, Moyes likes a bit of that, you know, because actually uh, Mark Noble's come in as as direct, as whatever, sporting director, whatever the case may be. And Moyes, you know, Moyes are very keen to uh, damn him with faint praise and downplay his role. So, yes, he has come into that. And there are, there are, a, you know, there are some youngsters that are doing it, like Darren Fletcher is, is doing it as well. But Learning yeah, I'm going to I'm, I'm bring him in with me. Um, and, yeah, I, I think I'll involve him in decisions about players. It was very much saying, he was praising him, but in a veiled way to say, no, he, he's, I'm in charge. Um so yeah, it would not surprise me if 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 Moises Moises just just letting people know, no, you know, oh, you know, yes, Newman's a scout. Of course, he could turn around to you know Newman. Newman probably won't pull him up on it. Newman's probably grateful for the job. Um, but you know, the the the, the, the whole thing sinks. I don't really know how many how many more excuses we really need to get rid of, get rid of the fella really. Um, but when you're making decisions like that. On top of the, the on-field decisions, which are horrendous, on top of all the other sitting on the, the money for a striker as long as he did, all the other stuff. Um, exactly. We did nothing in that January transfer window. Bringing in one or two players might have just possibly won us the Europa League and got us into the Champions League football. We don't know. It's hypothetical. I'll tell you what, it certainly would have helped. But likely. And, likely, Gio. Um, likely. We, 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 were, we were in a semi-final. It doesn't take... It's not like you're saying... We were in the we were we were in yeah. the group stage and we might have won. One 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 goal makes a difference, you know. At, at this at this point, you you are dealing. We we very did nearly finish six. So you, again, you're talking, you know, whatever six more points. And, well, and we're two are, points behind Man United. We're exactly. two points away. We were one win away from finishing in the Europa League spots yeah, in, the, exactly. in, in the league. And Mikel Antonio was bang out of form in the second half yeah. of that season. He was. Not scoring goals. He scored in the knockouts, one goal in the knockout stage of the Europa League. He got a couple in the Penny League, I think, including the last game of the season against Brighton. But I, I could be wrong. I think he only scored one other goal from middle of January onwards or something in the Penny League. He was bang out of form and he needed help. It wasn't Antonio's fault. It was Moyes' fault for not going into the January transfer window. But the whole time in January, he sat there saying, there's nobody available. There's nobody available. Yes. Nobody available. Well, actually, lies. You've now just told us there was someone available. You chose not to go get him. And that Man City deal, like I said, timeline's important here. This We're talking round about the middle of December that Rob Newman would have said to Moyes here. And Moyes said, no, thank you. Man City didn't announce the deal for Alvarez until deadline day in the January transfer window because then they then loaned him back to River Plate for the remainder yeah. of the season. So there was plenty of opportunity. It's not like the 1st of January, City swooped in and got him. They Listen, hypothetically, if we made a bid, City might have thought, oh, actually, we're going to go in bid as well. We're going to yeah. go get him. But there's also that element that City might have thought, oh, let West Ham have him. And if he's good, we'll just go and get him from West Ham and mm. pay 40 million instead of 14 million. It's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll work something out. But we had an opportunity to sign a potential world class player for 14 million. And, and the manager turned it down. And this is from the manager. This isn't hearsay. This isn't something that's been leaked or anything like that, which would be convenient timing given the pressure he's under. This is from the manager's mouth. Um, I'm more surprised he's got time to be doing all these podcasts. For somebody that doesn't like social media and often has a dig at fans in social media, he's, he doesn't mind sitting does, in front of somebody. He does a lot of chatting. interviews, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, this, is, this was done when we were hoping they were on the training pitch sorting something out and he's sat in front of Stephen Bartley having a chit-chat about how he turned down Alvarez a year ago after his holiday in Florida. Um, I'm not happy, Gonzo. This is... I say final nail in the coffin. It won't be, but I tell you what, he's uh, handing the nails to people to put in his own coffin at the minute, and that was just a stupid thing to do. It's a silly interview to do in the first place. He was never going to come out that good, bearing in mind West Ham in a relegation battle. But to then admit stuff like that, I mean, fair play for being honest, but that's all I can say about it because everything else is just baffling, absolutely baffling. Um, I, I think this is the domino effect. I think when you look back at the summer window and you think, well, why have we got Paqueta? I'm not sure. Why, well, now we know why. Possibly it's because he turned down Alvarez and they said, right, that's enough. You're not having it. You're not picking the players anymore. Uh, look at the success of Alvarez. You're not getting that money. Um, 
We don't know. That's you, Steve. Should we leave it there, my friend? Yeah, mate. Yeah, I'm going to anyway, go watch more, more, of the, uh, more of the interview, actually. Half past eight tonight, myself and Gonzo are back live on this channel with a cup of tea. It's been a while. So tonight we're going to do a cup of tea, and then later in the week or early next week, we'll do a mug of tea, which will be exclusive on Patreon. But tonight at 8.30, we are here. So if you're not doing anything this evening, come and join us. Uh, we'll have a chit-chat. We'll be discussing Moyes and potential replacements, anything surrounding West Ham. And it'll be a bit more about this interview yeah, with Stephen Bartley because so. we're going to go listen to the full episode now. I'll put a link to the podcast in the description below and also be on the end slate in just a few seconds if you want to go listen. David, I see you. It was brilliant, by the way. Forget the Moyes episode. Just what he does, Stephen Bart, I think is fantastic. Shall we leave it there, Gonzo? Yes, mate. If you've enjoyed this episode, please do drop a like on and subscribe to Jamis Chat. Myself, Gonzo, catch you at 8.30.